Hello and welcome. Today is Good Friday. It used to be called God Friday as a day to turn our thoughts and attention specifically to God. How do you feel about that? Good Friday is the day that Christians around the world give tribute to the death of a man named Jesus. There was a time in my life when a close friend of mine was suddenly taken from me. Nothing I could do or say was going to bring him back and the loss felt unbearable, cruel and unfair. I was consumed with grief, emptiness, pain, anger. I questioned everything. And when I think back to this day, I don't call it good. So why then do we call today Good Friday? When it is a day marked by the horrific, torturous death of an innocent man named Jesus. I think the answer is found in who you believe Jesus to be. I believe Jesus to be God himself who chose to live amongst us on the earth to show us how to get the best out of life and how to manage the tough bits well. I believe his death to be a powerful, life-transforming act that makes it possible for me to know for sure God's unconditional love for the whole of humankind, bringing a guaranteed hope of life beyond death. Therefore, I like to call today Good Friday because it's a day that shouts, God loves you. A day to recognise that you are unconditionally loved by God. How good does that sound to you? God loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and never really die. God did not send his son into the world to condemn its people. He sent him to save them. Matthew chapter 27 After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they'd crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who were going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you're the son of God. And in the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross and we'll believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From the sixth hour, until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them came, ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. 
And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open, open and the bodies of many holy people who died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They'd followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea called Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. forget that day. I remember everything about it. Everything I saw, everything I did. Everything. I'll never forget it. Oh, oh sorry, my name's Rachel and I was there the day that it happened. The, the day that Jesus died. Like I said, I'll, I'll never forget that day. Oh, I must prefer to remember the week before, you know. That was amazing. You see, that was when I heard that Jesus was coming to town. My town, the place where I lived. Oh, I could hardly believe it. I had heard so much about Jesus. Everyone was talking about him. He was saying things that were really challenged people's thinking. And everyone was talking about the stuff that he was doing. Like, people who couldn't see now could. Deaf people... We're hearing again. And people who hadn't been able to walk were now running about all over the place. Incredible, I know. But my favourite thing I heard, right, was about this little girl that died. Oh, no, not that that's my favourite thing. But you know what happened after? Because there she was, dead in a bed. And Jesus went into her house, looked at her, and just said, Get up. And she did. And then he turned to her mum and he said, get her something to eat, will you? She'll probably be hungry, as though it was the most normal thing in the world. So you can understand now, can't you, why everyone was talking about it. And when I heard he was coming to town, well, wow, I could hardly contain myself. I ran up to the city gates to meet him. Oh, I think the old town were there because the place was packed. I remember I saw all my neighbours, my hairdresser, even the priests from the temple were there. And then we saw him coming over the hill with his friends. We called them his disciples because they followed him everywhere. And you will never guess, but he was travelling on a donkey. Oh, he did look funny. But at the same time, so impressive. And as he came through the city gates, the crowd gave up a massive cheer. Deafening it was. 
and people, right, they took off the coats and laid them on the floor, making like a big carpet for Jesus to ride across. Well, I were going to put my coat down, but, you know, it was new and I thought, oh, forget it, ruin me, husband will kill me. So I didn't do that. But others, right, were taking great big branches off the tree and waving them and shouting, Hail Jesus, King of the Jews. So that's what I did. I joined in, waving branches and shouting, Hail Jesus, King of the Jews. Oh, and we were singing and dancing, having a great time. It was an amazing day. I remember exactly where I was when I heard the next bit of news. I was in my kitchen making some bread, preparing for the Passover. It's like a festival that we have every year. And anyway, I could hear my name being called from outside. Rachel, Rachel, shouted all over the street. I'm thinking... Who is that outside shouting my name, making a show of me? Well, before I could even get there, me mate Mary bursts into me kitchen and shouts, Rachel, Rachel, they've arrested him. I says, hey, slow down, woman. What are you on about arrested do? She said, they've arrested him. They've arrested Jesus. Jesus, I said. What on earth have they arrested him for? I don't know. She said, what's he done? I asked. Oh, I don't know, Rachel, nothing as far as I can tell, she said. I just know that they've taken him. Well, like I said, I was preparing for the Passover. And quite often at this time of year, the governor lets a prisoner go free, and this year was no exception. I'm usually not that bothered to be interested in stuff like that. But this year, I just had to go. You see, they were going to let us choose between Jesus and Barabbas. Well, Barabbas I knew about. I knew too much about him. He was one bad man. He'd even robbed from members of my own family, you know. I was well pleased when he got locked up. I felt safe to walk the streets again. But Jesus, what had he done wrong? I didn't know of anything. So there we were. The place was so packed I could hardly move. And we were asked, who do you want to go free? Jesus or Barabbas? Well, one person shouted Barabbas and then another person shouted Barabbas and then another and another and before I knew it, it felt like everyone was shouting Barabbas, Barabbas, free Barabbas. So I joined in, didn't I? I shouted Barabbas, Barabbas. Free Barabbas! Oh, I don't know why I did it. Oh, but you know what it's like when you just follow the crowd and you just do what everyone else does without stopping to think for yourself. Oh, why didn't I stop and think for myself? <laughs> because the next time I saw Jesus, I, I hardly recognised him. His face was swollen and bruised. Oh, they beat him up. They beat him up really bad. He had blood running down his head from where they'd stuck a crown of thorns. They said it was a joke. But it didn't look that funny to me. And his back, oh, you should have seen it. Well, perhaps it's best you didn't. It was ripped to shreds where they'd whipped him. And they were making him carry his own cross. I thought, hasn't this man suffered enough? And there he was, stumbling through the street, past my house, past the shops that I went to. And I just didn't know what to do. I looked around and do you know that there were people there then who were laughing at him and cursing him, swearing him and shouting things like, Good riddance to bad rubbish. We don't want the likes of you round here. And they were spitting at him, trying to kick and punch him as they went past. And there were others who were crying, pleading, begging the soldiers to let him go. Oh, please, let Jesus go. He's done nothing wrong. Don't kill an innocent man. And then I remember one of the soldiers stopped and asked this guy from the crowd to help Jesus carry his cross. I suppose that's one good thing that happened that day. Perhaps the only good thing. Before I knew it, we were up on the hill outside the city. 
And you know, they were nailing Jesus to a cross. All the people, they just tied up, but Jesus, they got big long nails and hammered them into his hands and his feet. And even then, you know, there were people still laughing, cursing. Ah, uh, you think you're something special, do you? Well, come on, jump down from there. And I just remember seeing this woman. I, I think it was his mum and she was just on her knees, crying her heart out. And then I, I heard him speak. Jesus, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. It was like even while he was there dying, he was thinking of us, asking God to forgive us. Oh, and then I got really scared. You, you see, all the sky went black. It wasn't time to go dark. And, and the ground, it started shaking and I just wanted to get home. Oh, I remember stumbling back through the streets, clinging hold of whatever, whoever, just to stop myself from falling, pushing me way through the crowd. It was manic. And finally, I reached my house and I burst through the door, shouting out for my husband. Oh, where was he when I needed him? And then I just threw myself down on the floor and I cried and I cried. <laughs> just thought, what have we done? <laughs> Why did we do this? <laughs> Why have we killed Jesus? It was on the Friday that they ended it all. Of course, they didn't do it one by one. They weren't brave enough. All the stones at the one time, or no stones thrown at all. They did it in crowds, in crowds where you can feel safe and lose yourself and shout things you would never shout on your own and do things you would never do especially if you felt the camera was watching you. It was in a crowd in the church that did it, and a crowd in the civil service that did it, and a crowd in the street that did it, and a crowd on the hill that did it. And he said nothing. He took the insults, the bruises, the spit on the face, the thongs on the back, the curses in the ears, he took the sight of his friends turning away, running away, and he said nothing. He let them do their worst until their worst was done, as on Friday they ended it all and would have finished themselves had he not cried, Father, forgive them, and began the revolution. Saviour of the world, what have you done to deserve this? And what have we done to deserve you? Strung up between criminals, cursed and spat upon, you wait for death. And look for us, for us whose sin has crucified you. To the mystery of undeserved suffering, you bring the deeper mystery of unmerited love. Forgive us for not knowing what we have done. Open our eyes to what we are doing now. As through wood and nails, you disempower our depravity and transform us by your grace. Father God, in the light of your loving sacrifice for us, 
Help us to bring those things, those thoughts, those actions to the cross. To recognise your death has conquered all. To leave them there and to trust them with you. Father, help us to recognise the extent of your love, the depth of your commitment and the hope that is to rise as we wait. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.